Can I get your thoughts for the moment on what the gold market is most pricing itself off of? Is it interest rates? Is it geopolitical risk? Is it now this Middle East potential turmoil? Good morning. Um, yes, two weeks to go before I'm in the, the CEO role, so very much looking forward to taking on that opportunity. In terms of uh, what we're seeing with the, with the gold price, um, it's wonderful to see it up at the levels it's at, and there's some there's factors behind that that, that uh, potentially can keep it up there. But given uh, I've grown up in mining, I've lived through many, many price cycles, my focus with our business is to ensure that we've got a sustainable business right through the price cycle. So we're very much focused on ensuring that at $1,200 gold, we have a viable business, and that's increasingly important given the work we're doing to acquire the, to, to uh, integrate the gold core assets into our business. So that's $1,200, which gives you a nice $300 cushion, at least for now. But Tom, are you concerned that something might kick off in the Middle East or in other parts of the world that would impact your ability to mine and carry out operations? Not seeing anything there at the moment that would impact um, supply to our, our operations. I think uh, for the various commodities or inputs that we have into our business, I think there are plenty of other sources of that supply. So certainly at this stage, not seeing any concerns uh, from that perspective. Mr Palmer, good morning. It was this time last year that we really saw the latest round of M&A kick off. You've taken part in that. We're seeing reserves falling and prices rising. Do you think we're going to see more widespread M&A now? It's a, it's a bit hard to see. Uh, you're certainly not seeing it around Denver Gold. It's a, there's certainly lots of people here, but not seeing a, a lot of that discussion happening here. I think uh, you're hearing a lot of people talk about just focusing on managing their business as well. A lot of people talking about ensuring they've got a viable business at $1,200 gold. So not seeing uh, much of that chatter here, and certainly our focus is on uh, ensuring we support the, the new joint venture in Nevada and ensuring that we deliver value from uh, our acquisition of Gold Corp. You are going to have to make disposals. You are going to be making disposals. Do you think the higher oil price is going to accelerate that process? We're, um, we just announced uh, that we've got the potential sale of the Red Lake asset. We've got a lot of inbound interest. Uh, probably over a dozen people have expressed interest in, in Red Lake. So that'll be a focus to see whether we can get good value for Red Lake. But apart from that, uh, we're pretty happy with our portfolio and we'll be focusing on ensuring that we're delivering value from, from all of the assets in our portfolio. So that's, that's going to be our focus. Uh, there's a process with Red Lake, but everything else is very much part of our portfolio. You have mentioned $1.5 billion worth of divestitures, though. I imagine Red Lake wouldn't fully fetch that. So what are you anticipating or hoping that Red Lake would fetch? And what are the other assets you might be thinking of divesting? Well, still early days with Red Lake to understand um, in, in that process to understand what we might get from it. We talked about during the uh, during announcing the acquisition of Gold Corp that potentially up to one to one and a half billion dollars in investments could come through, but we were under no pressure to do that. Our focus was really on understanding what value that we could extract from those Gold Corp assets, and that's very much our our focus at the moment. Is uh, we committed to 365 million dollars per annum over a, a three-year period, and we're very much focused on delivering that value for our shareholders. Now, you said as well that you're looking for six and a half million ounces of output this year. Are you reaching that target? How do you expand on that, Tom? Uh, we certainly have guided to that number this year and we're on track to, to meet our guidance, so there's no changes there. What we talk about in the long run uh, for, for Newmont Gold Corp is a production profile uh, between six and seven million ounces and probably closer to six million ounces. And one of the things that's really exciting about the Newmont Gold Corp portfolio is we can see out well into the long term, well into the next decade and even the decade after with a production profile about that rate. And that's, that's what really excites me about the business that I'm about to take over and, uh, and about the value that comes from the Gold Corp acquisition. Mr Palmer, can I just circle back to the kind of pricing issue, the M&A issue? Um, we're, we're at 1,500 now. You said you want the business to be sustainable at 12. Uh, as Vonnie says, that gives you a pretty good cushion right now. Prices are rising. In, in the medium term, what do you see? If, if prices stay where they are now, what are you going to do with that extra money? Where do you see it going? I, you've already done a pretty big piece of M&A. I'm assuming that that's going to be further down the list. Do we get more dividends? Are there buybacks? What is that cash going to be used for? Yeah, we're, we're going to maintain our, our capital allocation discipline. Our, our first focus will be on uh, reducing debt. 
Um, so if we do see those elevated prices and the cash come through, it'll be reducing debt, it'll be sure, ensuring that we've got the, um, the cash available to grow our business, whether that's our exploration program or the projects that we have in our pipeline. We wouldn't be changing the sequence of implementing those projects, but ensuring we've got the cash available to support those projects. And if after those things we had some cash available, then, then the dividend and reviewing our dividend policy would be the next step.